the wonderful world of Disney. Welcome back to Barry Charles, your one-stop shop for everything finance. And today we're going to talk about the greatest of all, Mickey Mouse. Yes, the Walt Disney brand absolutely going down, down, down. 22% down in 2023. Um, the stock is yet to return a dividend. Um, and the company's shaky, very shaky um performance in 2023 is making it a worry for investors as they continue to move away from the stock but is it going to be a turnaround well we're here to find out we're going to do a stock analysis we're going to look at the key metrics from revenue net profit earnings per share p e ratio free cash flow long-term debt um, a return on investment investment capital this is a big key metric i have um when I look at stocks, and obviously the shares are outstanding. Um, and if you stay right to the end, my friends, we will do the intrinsic value, possibly of Disney, where you can maybe look at a place to maybe buy the stock, not financial advice, do your own research before you invest in any stock. Invest at your own risk. But let's get to it. Disney stock analysis with intrinsic value at the end. Remember to like and subscribe if you like the video. And let's get to it. Yes, Disney, yes. Everything about Disney says, yes, we should be buying. Revenue, $82 billion. Um, and it's expected to go to $90 billion this year. So they, they are still doing well revenue-wise. Not out of this world, but they are doing well. So that's not an issue for the company. But where the issue comes here is in their profit. $3.1 billion in 2022. It's expected it could be less in 2023. Time will tell. But that's not good. Um, earnings per share, 3.71, which is pretty low. And the P-E ratio, 23. So is it a real big growth company? Is it a safe company at the moment? Sort of in between, if you're looking at that. Short interest, hardly anything, 1.1%, so they're not worried about that. But so what is the issues with Disney at the moment? Well, obviously the, the Disney Plus um, is still losing a lot of money. Um, there's talks that the Disney movies aren't doing as well. This time around, they're not doing so well at the box office. They haven't returned the dividend. And this, the management of the company has been pretty much mediocre over the last couple of years. Now Bob Iger is trying to turn that around and we will see if that happens. Because if we look at the long-term assets of $203 billion versus $92 billion, which is down from 2021, so that's impressive. So they are doing well there. Um, it's a pretty good balance sheet between uh, assets and total liabilities, so they're doing well there. But the free cash flow is still something, but more, but 163 billion. Um, obviously it's, yeah, it's better than the negative in 2021. So they are doing all right. But um, when you got a long term debt of 47 billion, not good, not good at all. Not good. Too much long term debt. That's a big issue for this company, and they'll be hoping to pay that off with um. With Disney Plus over the next five years when that continues to grow, but that's the question you have to, to talk to yourself. And return on invested capital right now is only a mega three percent, so it's not good, not good. But this stock has been beaten down, so is it a chance to maybe buy Disney? Well, what does the future hold for Disney right here, right now? Where are the positives? Um, it's a tough game this um, streaming service. Don't get me wrong, they got ESPN as well, which is good, um, but the pressure is coming. All these companies have to pay big on getting content. Now, Disney make their own, so all the profits go back to them. Compared to Netflix, they get some profits from themselves, but a lot is from outsourcing. So that's that's the positive that Disney has, but obviously in the, their competition to get the top actors and that prices going up on that side of things is very hard to really make big money, and that's the issue they're having. Obviously at the box office as well, they've got to pay the big actors a lot of money to get them going. You know, as you probably notice lately with Disney, they've gone for newer and younger people. They're not necessarily stars to try and make more bang on their buck, which is necessarily it's a good thing, but then necessarily it's not a good thing because um, these big actors do put bums on seats. So that's the question Disney are having at the moment. And another big question for Disney is where is the creativity? Where are some new movies coming out that are not just reruns, remakes? Seems to be the big thing they're doing. 
can I be more creative and then I'm sure Walt Disney wants to be more creative as well he'll be wanting that they really have not been that creative they need to really boost it Sneakerella was a good movie I saw on Disney for something new they need to create more and more new stuff it can't just be all the old stuff they really need to push to improve that side of things Disney does um but yes let's um shares outstanding of 183 billion i believe yeah 183 billion um this stock's um in terms of shares outstanding still a bit up and down like yeah probably more up than anything so they haven't really been giving you money back so that's interesting with disney probably not something you'd expect from disney you think they'd be giving you back the money maybe that's going to turn around with bob Iger. we will see if they really need to um in terms of whether they need to grow they got to push that earnings per share up, but clearly yeah, they've got to get their net profits very low. Very low net profit. They've got to somehow really push, rank that back up, get that going in the right direction. They've got to get it up probably like 3 or 4x from where it is now, at least just to get itself more compatible with what they need to do to compete with the big boys. Um, so a lot of work to be done for Disney in that thing. Let's get to, now let's have a look at the intrinsic value. We're looking at the grams calculator. Now you can understand I've talked about it a lot, so, um, but basically it's earnings per share, the share price, growth rate, and what the current bond yield is, gives you an intrinsic value of a simple one. So stock price, I'm going to get about $85 from when I recorded this, with um, earnings per share of 3.7 and a growth rate of 5, the stock will be worth about $71. If you go to 10% growth rate, you're looking at $110 a share. And if you double the earnings per share, you're looking at over $200. And if you can somehow double the growth rate as well, which is highly unlikely, but you're looking at a $400 stock. So there you go. So I'm taking you from the bottom all the way to the top. Um, where the stock price is for me, or where I see it at the moment, I, to be fair, thank you, it might be a little undervalued at the moment. I'd say it hasn't been great, but I'm just expecting it to improve. Um, a hundred dollar stock is my intrinsic value, so I'd be looking at it at fifty dollars now. Can they get to that two hundred dollar rate? Um, possibly, but Disney hasn't been a great performing company for a long, long time, so they're going to have to do a lot of execution if they want to turn this company around. But it's a, this and this be fair, Dinkum. I have to tell you, Sam, I've been in this stock before and sold it all. Yes, I sold it all before it went real bad. Um. I was thinking about buying it when it was lower. I didn't. Um, I'm just not convinced of it being an absolute big, big banger for me. So that's why I haven't gone into it. That's why I've looked at more stocks like Meta and that now. But now Meta has risen so high. Disney is one of those companies you've got to look at. I think it needs to drop a lot more for me to look at investing, to be honest. Um, so to me, it needs to drop quite a lot more before I look at buying Disney again. Um, even though I love the company as a whole, but in terms of the actual business side of it, the actual fire fundamentals, they've got to get their net profit up for me and their long-term debt's got to get paid down before I really look, get interested in improve the share buybacks as well and bring back the dividend. A lot of things they've got to do for me to really get me more excited about coming back to Disney. But thank you very much for joining me. And that's just a little quick synopsis of the Disney stock analysis and the intrinsic value. Hope you got a great value out of this. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel and share it all with your friends and have an awesome day out there.